She's ready to rule in Southern Manitoba. Great to hear it. Okay, so today we're going to talk about ruler work, what you need to get started. All right, so what is ruler work? Well, ruler work is free motion quilting using a ruler as an aid to create a design. If you're anything like me, I love quilting, but I absolutely, absolutely hate marking a quilt. It's time consuming, it's detailed. Sometimes I use the wrong marker and the marker doesn't come out. Sometimes I use the wrong marker and the marker comes out before I'm done. Um, there's a lot of things about marking quilts I don't like. So ruler work allows me to get right to the quilting and I don't have to um, spend too much time marking. Um, Ruler work first started with long arm quilters who do predominantly free motion quilting, and then they needed a way to do um, straight line quilting. So they ended up building a built up foot and they were allowed to run rulers kind of along the foot. If you do this on a long arm, you need a base for the rulers to ride on. You need a ruler work foot and you need a ruler. If you're gonna do ruler work on your domestic, your home sewing machine, well, you just need a ruler work foot. You don't need a base and you just need a set of rulers. All right, so that being said, how do I get the right ruler foot for my sewing machine? Well, if you have a modern uh, Bernina, it's really easy. You get to use the number 72 ruler work foot we talked about before. In, uh, we talked about it in the couching webinar and we talked about it also in the video for accessories. So, um, the great thing about it is it's adjustable and it fits all of our modern sewing machines. But maybe you have a Burnett or maybe you have an older Bernina sewing machine. Let me show you how you can get a ruler work foot to fit your machine. All right, we're going to move over to this little machine. Today I've got a little Burnett Sew and Go here. And um, the Burnett Sew and Go, um, to do ruler work, you just need to remove the shank of the machine, the regular shank of the machine, and purchase a ruler work foot that fits for your model. Now you got to be careful about this because you do need an accurate fit. This is a third party um, foot. I think this is a West Elite foot. They, they have the best third party feet, I think. And this looks like it fits the machine really well. But you'll see when I put the uh, presser foot down, there's really not enough clearance there for the quilt to be able to move. And in fact, it gets even worse because you would need to cover the feed dogs on this machine. So this machine, I can't lower the feed dogs, so I'd have to cover them. So I'm going to cover them with this guy that comes with the machine. There we go. And now you can see that clearly this is not going to allow for a, a quilt sandwich to pass through there. So work with your sewing machine dealer to get the right foot for your machine. Okay, it's doable. This is a medium uh, shank height, and probably this machine just needs a low shank height, and it would be perfectly fine. And I really want to thank Jarrett for lending me this foot. Jarrett from um, That Sewing Place in Newmarket, he's got feet that can fit almost any machine. If you have an older machine, you can buy the Bernina adapter number 77 or 75. I would go for um, the shorter one, number 77, and then you could just attach the ruler foot to that. There you go. Can you see that, Sarah? She's got it. So, and this allows for a little bit of play here for height if you have a thicker or um, thinner quilt. So I hope that helps to answer any questions people have about feet. Ellen is with me. She doesn't want to mark her quilt. Pam is with me from New Jersey. That's awesome. Okay, so that's what you need. You need a ruler work foot. And what's special about a ruler work foot, whether it's this one or the Bernina one, is it's got that high side to allow to run against the rulers. And preferably, if at all possible, you get the highest shank possible ruler work foot so that you can run all the way around your foot. Left, right, back, front, all the way around. So, because that will determine what kind of rulers you can buy. So if you have a Bernina ruler foot, let's move over to the Bernina ruler foot on, the, on Hamish here. So here's um, the Bernina ruler foot on our machine here. And it just goes on like any other foot onto the cone and then it's just secured in place. 
And what's great about this one is it is height adjustable. So I can accommodate for a thinner or a thicker quilt. And it does have this really nice high wall all the way around. So I can use the really thick rulers all the way around, which is what we want to see. Sometimes you may have to use a westerly foot that is not as high and you can um, just buy the thinner rulers. You don't want to use your everyday quilting ruler because that could slip ugh, under the foot and that could be a very dangerous situation. You could chip the ruler, you're definitely going to break the needle, you might put the timing out on your machine. All of those things sound dangerous and expensive to me. I don't want to do that. So you don't want a quilting ruler, um, like a cutting ruler, you want a quilting ruler or a template. So look for those. Bernina offers uh, two quilting kits. I'll show you what those look like. Sarah, we're moving fast today. All right, we have two kits. We have the ruler kit for frames. That would be for the Q20 machine or the Q24 on the frame or the Q20 sit down. And then we have the ruler kit for sit down models. That would be for any smaller machine. Um, like Hamish here, my B480 or a Burnett or a B770 or an 880, any of those machines. Okay, that's great. So you get a lot of uh, different basic rulers in these kits to get you started. Um, that's predominantly what I've been using and gosh, you can just make hundreds and hundreds of patterns with that. I'll show you what's inside each kit. So in the small kit, you get a nice set of circles. Did that help Sarah? Sarah's like, wherever you put it is not where I'm at. doesn't matter. A set of circles, a straight edge ruler with lots of lines on it. If those lines aren't your favorite lines, well, you know, you can add more lines in. Why not? You can use glow tape, which you can get at your store. You can use a Sharpie. You can use masking tape. You can add lots more lines. Don't, don't just be stuck with the lines that are on there. You get the squiggle tool, which has a large squiggle on one side and a short squiggle on the other. I just love saying squiggle. How many times can you say squiggle in a sentence? This is a great tool, the four-in-one tool. It's got four different curves all in one tool. So a lot of bang for your buck. And you also get um, an oval tool. I use this one a lot in borders and stuff like that. So it's been a lot of fun. Now you notice this one is white. And the reason that it's white is in the manu manufacturing process, they put up plastic on the back to protect the acrylic as they're manufacturing it. When you're ready to use your ruler, you definitely want to take the white off because I can't see through to the quilt with that on. So definitely you wanna take that off to prepare your rulers for quilting. Lots of sizes of um, ovals and of circles. And remember with those circles and ovals, you can use the inside diameter and the outside diameter. Um, just depends how you use this key. That's really fun to do. And the instructions for that are come right in the box. So the box has a great instruction sheet in there with lots of great free ideas. All right, so that's the small kit, the one for the small machines. If you have a larger machine, or if you just like the larger sizes, because I like the larger sizes, because frankly, I can just quilt a lot faster. Um, you get this really amazing uh, S-shaped tool. Again, you get a series of nice circles. Circles are so great. You can do concentric circles, you can do clamshells, you can do all kinds of great things with circles. This big oval kit, and you get the four in one again, and you got a straight tool. So this could be used on either machine, and so could the sit down model. That could definitely be used on the long arm as well. Don't get hung up on that. Just pick the, the size you want. Some people like to start with smaller sized rulers, so they would go with the sit down kit, and other people just like larger ones, so they would go for the large kit. Okay, so once you've chosen your ruler of choice, you need to make your ruler a little bit sticky. Can you believe it? You've got this nice clean ruler and you need to make them a little bit sticky so that when you move them on the fabric, you need to move the quilt sandwich and the ruler at the same time. 
it's a little bit tricky. So yeah, Ad uh, Adrian Hansen is saying she has just the Bernina ruler kits, but she hasn't run out of shapes yet. So they're really versatile kits. So to make them sticky, um, but we want to be able to see through them too, you can use a couple of products. I like to use Grippy by Odif. They're the same people that make the 505 basting spray. And you just put a light spray on your ruler and wait a minute and it's ready to use. Super easy to use. I really enjoy that one. And if you don't have that, you could use some 505 spray. That's the stuff we use for our basting of our quilts anyway. You might have it on hand if you're a quilter. So you could definitely use that. But let me show you the difference between the two. This is a ruler that's been sprayed with 505. And you can see the spray is very sticky and it's very effective. It works great, but it's a little bit clumpy and it has kind of attracted a lot of batting fibers and fabric fibers which is fine, it's not a big deal, um, but those fibers will build up. But here's the grippy one. Can you see, it's just kind of a smoky finish and it's still very tacky on the back, but it doesn't seem to pick up the fibers as much. That's what I've seen. And I just feel like I don't have to clean this off and add the, um, the spray again as many times. Um, this is my second bottle of grippy I've ever owned the first bottle lasted me um, seven ruler work classes with six to 20 participants. So uh, it went a long way. That's a long story for me to say. It went a long way. So if you can get the grippy, um, it's even better than the 505. If you're in a pinch, use 505. Okay, if you don't like sprays, some people don't like to put um, sprays into the atmosphere and I'm with you on that. That's a good idea. You can use the little grippies that you can get from the stores. Here's one. I got these um, sandpaper ones. You can flip it over too. See the sandpaper? They really help to grip the fabric too. And some of the stores have very similar things in uh, clear silicone or the anti-skid stuff. It looks like the anti-slip um, mat you would have under your rug. And it works really, really well. See, Allie is saying she has grippy at her shop. Lots of the Verdina shops have grippy. It's extremely popular because it works so well. But these uh, little sticky guys work really well too. All right, so you've got your rulers. You've got them sticky and ready to go. You're ready to do ruler work, right? Oh, maybe not. Maybe you should practice just a little bit first. So I'm going to show you how I like to practice and when I do a class, I bring this to the class. I'm going to show you this special tool I got. All right. Sorry, Sarah, I'm going to make a mess again. All right. So what I like to use are these little tiny drawing circles. These are from a company called Barn Cat Studio, um, but also Westerly carries these. Uh, in a nice clear version. The reason these are colored is that each color has a different aperture. So if you're using a mechanical pencil, you might use this. I found the orange one works better with a ballpoint pen. But today, because um, your screen might be small, I'm gonna use the crazy red Fruit Loop um, with a Sharpie. So those are called drawing circles and they're from Barn Cat Studio or I know Westerly has an equivalent to that. What's great about this is um, from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle is a quarter inch in every direction. Sounds familiar. Exactly like our ruler work foot, the needle is exactly a quarter inch away from the center. And so this gives us a good way to practice without ruining our precious, precious fabric collection, which my family thinks is out of control and I think is approaching the right size, but we'll talk about that another time. So you can use your circle to approximate um, the needle and uh, ruler work foot. So let's practice. So when I place my ruler and then put my needle in the center and draw a straight line, you'll notice right away the resulting line is one quarter inch away from the ruler. And this is the most mind-bending critical part about ruler work that you have to think about is that the needle and is always a quarter inch away. The needle's in the center, but the edge of the foot is always a quarter inch away of where you want it to be. So you have to place the ruler 
a quarter inch away. So if I wanted to do a line a quarter inch away from this existing one, I could put the ruler on top of the line, get my needle and foot over to the ruler, here we go, and draw another line. If I wanted a line half an inch away, I'd have to go to the next line, which I know is adding another quarter inch, and I could sew my line. And now I have a line a half an inch away from the other one. I hope that makes sense. For me, I had a bit of a mental leap um, trying to know where to place my ruler. And hopefully this will give you some tips today on that. So again, similarly to um, a straight line, you can do the same thing with a curve. I'm sure I'm in the way, Sarah, I'm so sorry. But um, you can do the same thing, Ugh, sorry, with a curve. There we go. See how it ends a quarter inch away, and then I have to place my ruler on the other side of my ruler work foot. And when I go to the quilt, you're going to see it doesn't, it's not always intuitive. And then I can do my next line and so on. Hopefully that helps you guys with moving the rulers. All right. So that's a great way to practice. You can probably make a little um, drawing circle from some plastic you have on hand or template material. My friend Elizabeth from So Inspiring, she makes everything on her cutting machine with template material. I'm sure she can figure out how to make that. If you have a kid with a 3D printer, maybe they could make you uh, some, that would be amazing. Or you can wait until we're back in the classroom and you can practice this. This is always part of my ruler work class. Hope we see you in the, in the store soon. All right, so now we know how to move our rulers. Okay, so we're over to the quilt. So I wanted to talk to you a bit about fabric. Um, don't try doing your first bit of ruler work on a precious, precious quilt. Please get some practice fabric. It could be plain fabric. I happen to have a really nice Northcott fabric here. This fabric is discontinued. Don't bother your stores about this. Just ask them for something pre-printed. A panel is great to practice on or a cheater um, quilt like this. Amanda Murphy has a couple of different ones out. Um, those are really great to use. So um, let me just show you how you can start to quilt on this. And the principles that you need to know for successful ruler work quilting. Are you excited? Press like if you're excited, because I'm so excited I'm barely making sense to myself. That's the scary part today. I'm going to show you on with two different straight rulers first, all right? Let's practice straight line quilting. So here's a, one of the best ways to get started. If you want to do this straight, now you and I might not do this straight on our small sewing machine. We might use our walking foot to do that. Um, I've got my foot on, my feed dogs are down. So the stitch length is going to be controlled by my movement of the quilt. I know. I think this is why I'm excited. I think this is why I'm scared. Anyway, you put your presser foot down. I'm going to make sure mine is down nicely close to the edge of the quilt. I don't want, I want to be able to move the quilt and I don't want it to flag. Uh, fabric flagging is when it moves up and down away from the needle plate and I could get skipped stitches. Who likes skipped stitches? Anyone? no response so yeah that's we don't want that so you want your ruler foot nice and um skimming the quilt all right i'm gonna do needle down and needle up to pull up my thread like a good quilter now i'm gonna give you a true confession right here right now i do all my ruler work on the bernina q20 sit down it has a built-in stitch regulator so frankly, I'm not that great at ruler work, but I'm learning and practicing, and hopefully you'll see part of the learning process here today. And I'm not afraid to show you that I can learn things too. All right, so just uh, do a couple stitches in place and you're ready to do your ruler work. I'm gonna pull the threads underneath. I just like them away. Cool. So you see what I did there? I put the needle where I wanted it to be, and now I'm gonna bring my ruler up to the foot and needle. If you do it the other way, you actually um, risk, run the risk of putting the foot down on the ruler and breaking the ruler. So it's really good practice. This is really important. 
Um, you really want to get your foot in place, your needle in place, and now bring your ruler to your foot. Tip number one. Yes, you're welcome. Anywho, um, now this is a pretty easy pattern because we're just going to follow this seam line down. But how do I know that my ruler is consistently one quarter inch away from the seam line? Well, I got to tell you, most rulers have a built in guide and on this ruler, it's right here. It's this notch. I know that this is where my um, needle is going to stitch and this is where I need to place my foot away. So it acts kind of like a guide. Now, uh, you don't want to have to stop here in the middle, so I'm just gonna push this beyond uh, the end of the seam. That's where I wanna stop. And I've got it nicely aligned. Tip number two. Now we know tip number one was needle down, ruler to the, ruler to the foot. I guess tip number two was showing you how to place the ruler. And tip number three is when you do ruler work quilting, you need to have a couple of pinkies on the ruler and a couple of pinkies on the quilt. Otherwise, this is not going to move as one. And that's what I need this to do is this whole shebang has to move as one. Here we go. Everybody cross your fingers. I haven't done this in a little while. Here we go. So. Um, so tip number three is to hold a bit of the ruler and a bit of the fabric at the same time. I'm going to sneak in tip number five. Don't move right away. Let the machine take a couple of stitches and then get started. Otherwise, you're going to get big starting stitches. Anybody tried that and had those big ugly stitches? I'm guilty of that. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to stitch a little bit, a couple of stitches, and then get going. The feed dogs are not active. It's all me. Okay, I can't move anymore. I'm going to stop and reposition. Don't ever be scared to stop and reposition if things are not going right. I couldn't have a more cluttered set here either. So Sarah's kind of laughing at me. She's like, how are you going to get this done with all that stuff there? Okay, so I'm going to continue on. I've moved everything. Now remember, don't move right away. Let the machine do a couple of stitches and get going. Oh yeah, so that's better. Now I haven't placed my ruler exactly right, but that's okay because today I'm just practicing. All right, I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna show you a different ruler. So this is a ruler that Amanda Murphy designed for us for the 125. It is sold out, but Amanda Murphy has a whole line of rulers like this. See the markings are a little bit different. They're black and white, so they show up great on dark and light fabrics. Really like this ruler. And it has a built-in grippy um, surface. So I don't even have to spray this one. So if you're ever looking for optional rulers, um, try looking for something like this. It's got lots of markings on it so I can um, do my 45 degree angles. Um, she's got them quarter inch away and stuff like that, half inch away, so on and so forth. But I really like these little hooks at the end. So again, this is where the needle is going to be and this is the edge of my ruler. So all the markings are built in. It's really quite a nice ruler as well. So look for Amanda Murphy rulers at your Bernina store. I gotta move over because it's making me crazy. There we go. All right, and here we go. We're off, letting it build up, moving along. Okay, the stitch length setting on my machine is irrelevant, doesn't matter. I'm the feed dogs, I have to keep the whole shebang moving. Couple of fingers on the quilt, couple of fingers on the ruler, both hands, and here we go. Now here's the distinct advantage of ruler work. When I get to the bottom here, normally if I was doing this with my walking foot, I would have to turn my entire quilt. But with ruler work, and this is what sold me on ruler work, I just have to move the ruler. So much easier than trying to move this entire quilt. I just move the ruler, and again, I do some placement, and I can keep continue quilting. Here I go, wish me luck. Building up. I'm getting better. See, Sarah, I said I just needed some practice. Hey, my stitches are getting a lot more consistent as I practice. So I'm going to practice just a little bit more and I'll come back. No, we're here live. We're doing this together. So you can see the difference in the two rulers. That's pretty cool, right? Love it. 
You can use small rulers too. I'm going to show you a small ruler, what you can do with this. So here's a small ruler and I'm just going to make a little orange peel kind of shape. I've got the black and white line of the ruler on the seam line and it's a quarter inch away from where I want to land. This would be incorrect if I lined this up exactly with the point because the needle won't land there. And that's the mental leap we have to make. We have to always be a quarter inch away from where we want to stop. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense for you guys. Hi, Linda, thanks for joining in, that's great. Um, Michelle says, do you ever use a Supreme slider? So a Supreme slider is a, a non-stick material that you can add to the base of your um, quilting table and it'll allow the quilt to move a lot faster. I haven't used it, Michelle, but I think that would be a really great idea if you had one to try using the Supreme slider. It'll help your quilt move a lot faster. Um, the other thing you could do is uh, make sure to use your larger table. This is my large 18 by 24 table. So if you have one, make sure you use the biggest table you have. Or if you have a handy person in your family, if you're handy, um, you can drop your machine right into the table and then you have a big level surface. In order to be successful on ruler work, very much like free motion, you need to be able to move the entire quilt. And my quilt is hanging down and that's because it's just a small quilt. But if it was a big quilt, you would want the majority of the quilt up on the table. So thanks for that reminder, Michelle. If you don't have Supreme Slider, you could also, there's like a wax spray you can buy from your um, quilt store, um, Bernina Dealer, your local quilt store, that you can spray that will make this more slippery. Um, it's kind of a waxy thing and it really does help to allow the quilt to move around. Ooh, Michelle, good point, thanks. All right, so I'm gonna show you what you can do with this round item. Again, fingers on the quilt, fingers on the ruler. And again, see, I didn't have to turn the, the quilt at all. Guys, I cannot quilt and talk at the same time. So see here I'm behind, I'm doing the same thing. I don't want to, I want to stop a quarter inch away from the seam line. And the other thing is be really careful when you're working behind here. You don't want your fingers here. So the, the foot could come down and crush your fingers. So I'm staying away from that. Going slowly. Ooh, I'm having problems moving it. I think a Supreme slider would be a great idea, Michelle. Again, I just moved my ruler so easy it's got the markings on it there's all kinds of other markings here too right i could use it here to make sort of a whole circle inside the block i can use it um, to make an angled sort of thing it's really really fun and creative i'm going to show you some resources that you might like to help you give i get ideas for patterns right and there you go back to my corner and then again sort of hard. I'm doing this quilting from the side here. This is really, I'm having fun now. Hope you're having fun. All right. And then what you could do is you could go back into here and do some free motion quilting. You could certainly put your BSR on at the end and do some regulated quilting. That would be really, really fun. So yes, definitely lots of things you can do with um, the rulers. Uh, the other thing you might like to have, if you don't have a pre-printed piece of fabric. I don't know if Sarah can see this. Is it better if I go here, Sarah? It's kind of hard to see this guy. This is called a crosshair ruler and it has eight different markings and you can mark your block with this and then that way you have some markings on where you can put your circles or um, feather shapes or your S-curve, that pretty Bernina S-curve would look great here. Um, so that kind of thing. That's a really nice thing too. The dealers have that. That's by Westerly. Westerly Crosshair Ruler. Um, so yeah, lots of different shapes. This is the four in one. I'll just show you how this one is used. Again, you can use, you could take some glow tape and you could just put it on top so that all your curves were the same every time you moved it. That would be really great. There's usually some lines to help you orient your ruler to keep it straight. So vertical and horizontal lines. But again, if, you, if there's not enough lines on your ruler, Draw one in, put some tape on top, get creative. I know you can do it. So I'll show you real quick how this is done. And that's the basics of ruler work. I hope that helps you guys. Um, I'm never gonna mark a quilt again, right, Michelle or Ellen? 
just can't mark quilts. It makes me absolutely crazy. Sometimes you'll have to turn the quilt if um, it's now too bunched up in the bed of the machine, but generally you wanna keep your quilt just going in one direction and just moving the ruler. It's so much easier than, than doing anything else. All right, anybody have any questions? I'm waiting for, there's one specific question I'm waiting for and I feel like nobody has asked it and I've put some hints in here. Anybody else? Uh, nobody's asked it. Okay, I might do this. I might have to say it. Um, Bonnie, um, mostly I use Bernina rulers, but yes, I was showing some Amanda Murphy rulers. These are um, the limited edition, they're all sold out. But Amanda Murphy has a line now called Good Measure. Sorry, and um, excuse me, and Good Measure, and they are available at the quilt stores now. And they have this really nice etching on the back, and she's got great, she's got like every circle, she calls them, every circle, every ribbon candy, every oval. They're just the greatest little collections. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is maybe you've bought a set of rulers, you're ready to do some quilting, and you have a two-inch ruler, and the recipe, the instructions, or I like to call them destructions, says you need a slightly bigger ruler. Well, that's when you can add in your um, couching rings. We were talking about these the other day, but the couching rings, they come in a set of three. One, two, and three. Here they are. And it just makes your ruler work foot a different size. So you can, I'm feeling for the etching on the bottom. The etching should be on the bottom. You just place the echo ring on a flat surface, line up the markings on your foot, and press down. And that's how you've installed the echo quilting rings. And now I've made a different size ruler. And if you're a long armor, you could just use this to echo around other shapes. If you wanted to do um, half inch, because now this, this was a quarter inch away from the needle, now it's a half inch. If you wanted to do half inch echoes around that shape I've already done, you could do that, so on and so forth. So I hope that makes sense for Connie and Bonnie and Hetty, that's great. So those are really nice to add to your ruler work foot. And last time too, we talked about the couching inserts. You can add a couching insert. Remember to raise your foot up. I just made it a lot thicker. Sorry, Sarah, my hands are always in the way. Sarah's like, I quit, you're impossible. So I have to make it a lot shorter. And now I can couch and use my ruler at the same time. Couching is so forgiving because the stitches are hidden in the couching thing itself, so everything is so easy to do. So I hope you'll give ruler work a try if anybody has any more questions. I'm gonna just, I'm going to name the elephant in the room. Why, oh why, Adrian, would you not use your BSR for ruler work? The, the BSR allows it to be stitch regulated. So why wouldn't I use that instead? So why don't the engineers just design um, a ruler work attachment for the BSR? Then we'd have the best of both worlds. We'd have the ruler foot height so we could use our rulers and we'd have the regulation of the Bernina stitch regulator. Has anybody been worried about that? Has anybody been thinking about that at night? Because I know I've gotten a lot of emails about that. And the reason is very simple. If we did that there, and you could use your ruler on any side of the foot. That would be amazing. And then what would happen on the day that you put your ruler behind and you brought your BSR down? Some, I can do this carefully because I have a manually lifted machine, but some of our machines are automatic, 880, 770. It would come down and it could crack the BSR. And then we'd all have to hold hands and cry together because that's a very, very expensive replacement. There is no repair replacement. And so that's why there is not a ruler foot attachment sold for the BSR. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can see it makes sense. Okay, so don't, don't lose sleep like me at night. That's why we don't have it. You certainly can't use this with a ruler. It's going to slide underneath and we're going to have a breakage issue again, which makes everybody scared and sad. So we don't want to do that. So hopefully that has answered the BSR question for you. Um, I 
had had that true confession earlier that I do like to do my um, ruler work on the Q20 because they have two BSRs built into the table. And so every stitch on the Q20 is regulated, even BSR. So if you have a Bernina dealer that has a Q20 in a nice, clean, safe room, when they reopen, maybe you could rent their Q20 and try it out because I have to tell you, it is a very, very pleasurable experience. All right, so I'm done demonstrating that unless anybody has more questions. Oh, Diane, I'm glad I helped you with that. That's great. Diane had that question. I knew that. Diane is a really smart uh, free motion quilter. All right, so just a couple resources I wanted to point out to you. Uh, we talked about the crosshair ruler, so it's kind of hard to see the crosshairs, but that's a nice thing to pick up um, from your Bernina quilt store to um, be able to do crosshairs. I'll show you why, because I really do recommend a couple of books here. One is by Amanda Murphy. She is a Bernina ambassador, and she has written this all, this is called Ruler Work Quilting Idea Book. It's available at most quilt stores, and it has, is all written based on those uh, Bernina rulers. And she takes each ruler, so here's the straight ruler, and she tells you how to do match stitch quilting and how to do Greek keys and all kinds of other things with that ruler alone. And see here is kind of where that crosshair ruler would come uh, into play. It'd be very easy to do the marking with the crosshair ruler. Okay, and then she takes a different ruler and she combines ruler work with free motion fills. Ooh, I love that idea. How to do medallions. She's using the four in one tool again. So lots and lots of ideas in this book. There's over 150 pages of ideas. Lots of pictures too for inspiration. Gosh, I love pictures. They're worth a thousand words. There you go. So that's the Amanda Murphy book. I can't recommend this book enough. This is a Bernina exclusive, only available at Bernina dealers in Canada because this is written by my coworker, Roberta Winnick, Roberta from Alberta, and she wrote a great book. It's over 50 pages, and again, she takes those rulers and shows you exactly how to place the rulers and how to make amazing, amazing repeating uh, motifs with the rulers that you've got. So just like Adrian was saying, she has um, the ruler work set from Bernina and she really hasn't found a need to go to other rulers because it's so versatile. So Roberta shows you how to make quarter circles and tangent circles, orange peel, um, how to mark your block for to be prepared for those motifs, um, how to handle borders and corners and it's a great great book and not only that at the end of the book there's a great project that she developed, a quilt as you go quilt isn't that cool where you just work on small little pieces and then put your favorite pieces into the quilt and she's got a layout for a lap quilt and also a layout for a twin and this is what Roberta did one winter she wrote a book I think it's amazing I can't wait to make my quilt over this winter work on my ruler work so you can get this book called ruler work by Roberta Winnick at Bernina dealers only um, it could be shipped to the US uh, Kim and there is no download currently, but we can get that from you. And Diane, yes, you can buy from your store for sure. All right, so those are some books I recommend. If you don't want to spend too much money, I have some lesser uh, costing items for you as well. Um, I was talking about a training panel. This is uh, one done by Amanda Murphy. Sorry, Sarah. And uh, again, this is based on the Bernina rulers, and she even wrote a free PDF to go with it. And we based a lot of classes on this, but if you can't attend a class, you certainly can download this um, booklet. I put it on our Pinterest page. You can um, buy the panel from a Bernina dealer. It's really exclusive to Bernina dealers. Or you could use those techniques on your own cheater panel. There's no reason you couldn't do that. So that's another one. That's a free uh, ebook. You can get that online. Just Google Bernina Ruler Panel, Amanda Murphy. It comes up, no problem. Or you'll see it linked to our printers page. If you would rather make a smaller project, and I do recommend starting with a small and easy project. Oh, 
hope Sarah's going to kill me. Um, there's this cute little zippered bag designed by Amanda Murphy. A little bit of straight line quilting, a little bit of curved quilting, and then she even recommends putting in a little bit of BSR work there. And that's a really nice little project to make, a really nice one to start on. So try that out. That's also, I put that on our Pinterest page. She's got some videos that go with it. So um, link through the Pinterest page, you'll see the PDF and the videos and the blog are all there. If that doesn't strike your fancy, you could always make a free motion pillow. We have a nice project from Nina McVeigh. She uses the circles to make amazing shapes and it's just a small 18 by 18 pillow so low commitment right sometimes we love that so we have the booklet for this and a video to go along with it this was one of those made to create studio online projects and i highly recommend that one it's nice quick and easy there's another one we have an ebook by nina which is a table runner again using the basic shapes from our basic quilt pattern it's a really quick and easy sew, uses up scraps, and you can make a nice little table topper or table runner. That's also gonna be linked to our Pinterest page. These are free people, try them out. And lastly, I love to mention the ruler work quilt along that Amanda Murphy did last year or the year before. Um, this is kind of a four or five part uh, quilt along. This one is very much like the idea that Roberta had in her book, but this is all one piece. So if you make a boo-boo here, you've got to pick it out and redo it because it's going to stay in your piece. Whereas Roberta's sort of quilt as you go technique means I can throw that piece out and remake it if I have to, and you know I'll have to. So there you go. Lots of great quilting ideas. And I hope that that inspires you to try out ruler work quilting. Um, as we get better, I'll show you some more projects as I get to practice and get better and hopefully you'll show me your projects too. I hope you all have a great week and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Next week we are doing how to make a mask with your serger and how to make a quilt with your serger and other sneaky things we like to do with sergers. So I hope you'll join us next week Thursday 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, hopefully the neighbor will not uh, mow his lawn that night, and uh, we'll see you then. Bye, everyone!